Good evening and a very warm welcome to Orient Live here in the E10 studio. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Jabo Abire and Brendan Pitcher this evening and the O's are looking to make it four wins on the bounce and maintain our unbeaten month so far and we face struggling Oldham Athletic. Um, and it's, Jabo, since it's the last time you've been here, we've won three on the bounce and the pressure's on you tonight. If we lose, then maybe you're the omen. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's harsh, I think it's harsh. Last time I was here, there was a good performance at um, Forest Green, so and they've just kicked on from there. So uh, I'm confident, though, I'm confident I won't be no, no bad omen today. <laughs> <laughs> and, and looking at that winning run now, Brendan, obviously the win on Saturday made it the first three wins on the bounce in 12 months, and now to do this would go one step on. I don't even know when the last time we won four on the bounce was. I think it was March 29 is seen on to Justin, but it's, it's interesting that it keeps happening in March, isn't it? I, I, uh, the, the last time was on the Joby last March, and now it's happened in March this year, and it was March 2019 on to Justin, and it shows the progress that Richie Wells has made in terms of we hadn't won a whole game in the calendar year of 2022, and now we're looking at four on the bounce, and it shows that despite the lack of time on the training ground, he's really implementing his ideas and, and shows the quality of the squad we've got, and it is really a really impressive job he's done so far. Well, the wins have been slightly used to come by, I guess, with the amount of games we've had to play and the amount of games has full Richie to make a few changes this evening. So let's take a look at the starting lineup for Leighton Orient FC. And in goal, as usual, number 22, Lawrence Vigoru. Number three, Connor Wood. Number seven, Paul Smith. Nine, Harry Smith. Number 10, Frank Nuble. 14, Otis Khan. Wearing the armband this evening, number 19, Omar Beckles. 20, Ruel Sotiriu. 26, Hector Kiprianu. 34, Ethan Coleman. And 35, George Ray. And on the bench for the O's, Sam Sargent, Aaron Drynan, Darren Prattley, Matt Young, Shadoji, Dan and Krumer, and Jordan Brown. So, a few changes, Brendan. Um, Richie said on Saturday that a lot of them were looking a bit leggy, looking a bit tired, and it, it has been a relentless month. Do you think maybe the fact that we've put a bit of space between us and the drop zone will allow Richie to, to give a few of the fringe players a run out? Yeah, absolutely. I think he's come out and said that this 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 time where we we should be clearing the relegation zone touch wood and and now it's this is where the preseason starts this is where he builds for next season decides who maybe is going to be key to his plans and and, and who might not be and i think it's a big opportunity for the players tonight to, to show that they could be part of this team because the lads who have played so far under him it's been relatively unchanged and they've done very well so it's a chance for the for the fringe players to come in and, and he's been very vocal in the fact that he, he 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 wants to get them involved he wants to give them a chance and he wants to keep them happy and I think today is the perfect opportunity being that because of the fact it's the last Tuesday night game we have of the season. And how how does the mindset shift at, at this point, Jeff? And how does Richie go about managing that? Because, you know, as a player, maybe it is a bit easy to, to take your foot off the gas. But you've got a few players in there who are maybe out of contract, who are looking at a career past 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 August. And, and how, how how does he manage that? I mean, generally, um, in if it was in a different situation, um, players, you know, you're always fighting for something as the season go on, whether it's promotion or survival, and you get to a stage of season where you kind of you're you're not going to go down, you're not going to go up, you can take your foot off the gas, but because there's a new manager in town, you know, and people are trying to stake their claim for next season or the couple people out of contract, I don't think you can afford to sort of like rest on your laurels, you need to go and prove yourself and show that, you know, <coughs> I want to stake my claim for next season, I want to be here, I want to be in the plans. So I don't think there'll be any of that. And after the resurgence of, of recent weeks, you know, they're going to be on the gas, the momentum's with them, I think they'll be on it. Mm. And there's, of course, a couple of lone players starting tonight. We've got a few in the squad on the whole. One of them is a little bit of the Frank Nuble, and he's obviously not started too many. And he's got a chance now. He's out of contract against, well, at Colchester. What, what does what does he have to do and bring in 
I think he can play. He's playing in that left wing role, which I think really suits him, and it's where he wants to play. And he, he, he's just got to bring that physicality and work rate that I know he can do because he, he he's shown at times at Colchester that he's perhaps not the most natural goal scorers, but he'll bring you a presence on the left wing, which is something that perhaps you don't see he much of at this level. So I think today it's all about kind of just him and Harry Smith kind of linking up, seeing how they play together because I think they're two two big physical players that are probably something a little bit different to what we what we've seen recently under Richie Wellens. And, and we were talking earlier, Jabbo, about Frank being a player you've come up against a lot in your career. And we've spoken about him a lot on the show. He hasn't mm. really shown it yet. I'm sure he'd be the first to, to admit that. He maybe hasn't had the chance to. Mm. But what, what do you expect from him getting his first start under Richie? Well, um, I think if, if there's an opportunity to show what you're about, then it's today. Um, you know, he's coming into a team full of confidence. Sometimes when you've, you come in on loan and the team ain't really firing the way you expected them to when you're coming into a team and it doesn't quite go that way but suddenly they're winning there's a buzz I'm in the team now let me show you what I'm about and I think him playing on the left is is, is where he's at his most dangerous because a lot of people look at him and play him down the middle every time I've seen him and I've been like a fan of his I've been like wow this guy's been awesome saying he's been on the left hand side and he's and he can dribble he, he can come inside and he and he sometimes he's got a spectacular go in him so mm. hopefully it clicks for him today and it, it, it has been tough for him I guess because mm. all of the other attacking options have, have been on flames you've got yeah. to start with the little Paul Smith he's He's single-handedly, I think, trying to win the goal of the of the year competition. <laughs> maybe even the Puskas. Um, but he's been incredible, and he's starting again tonight, which is is, is a good sign considering the injuries he's had. Mm. Even recently, we've obviously been having to manage his minutes, mm. but having him out there again tonight against probably one of the worst defenses in the league. Mm. He, must be rubbing your hands together. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, he's come in and he's, it feels like a new player, a new signing, you know. He's, he's, you know, he's been very industrious. He's scored some fantastic goals and long may it continue. And it's good for his confidence as well after being laid off for a period of time to hit the ground like he's done. It's just fantastic and fantastic for everyone around. It really is. And while we're, we're looking at the attack as well, let's look at the other two strikers, starting with Ruel Soteria because we just keep praising him all the time, but it was another goal for him. Mm. He just seems to be scoring in most games now, and do you, you, you almost expect he will score tonight? Yeah, like you say, we are running out of superlatives a little bit for Ross Terry at the minute. I think he's he's on just the best run of form he's ever been on in his career. I think I look back to when he came into the side as a 18, 19 year old under Ross Embleton, and he had a similar spell where he seemed to be just full of confidence and scoring from all angles. But this this run feels a little bit more consistent in terms of the fact that the goals he's scoring are all different types of goals, and it, he just looks so clinical at the minute. Like you say, you do feel like if he gets a chance, he's going to score at the minute, and, and I think. The fact that he's he's playing again tonight really shows the the faith that Richie Wellens has in him and and, and the, in how he recognises how how confident Ross Terry must be feeling right now. And then how do you bring Harry Smith into that mix as well? Then because he's a, he's a tricky one. He's probably a a different kind of player to to Ross Terry, Dryan and, and Paul Smith. But how do you 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 get him into this attack that's doing so well? Yeah, I think it's probably fair to say that he's not a typical Richie Wellens striker. I think I was looking back at some of the strikers he signed previously and I don't think Richie Wellens has ever signed a, a big target man of the type of Harry Smith. But I think what Harry Smith brings is... is it's a bit of a cliche, but he is a good technical player. He's good with his feet. He's not just a, a big lump who can hold the ball up. We're seeing here with, with, with some of the clips. He's he's a very good finisher, and he, he can bring you something different to this team. And I think Richie Wellen's sides, look, they'll press from the front, and they'll have to work hard, and that's perhaps maybe not his biggest strength, and that's where Aaron, someone like Aaron Dryden excels. But it shows that Harry, Harry Smith can bring you something different. It, it, and tonight is, a, is going to be a big night for him to prove what he can do to Richie Wellens, look, this, uh, that goal is still the goal of the season for me, despite Paul Smith. And it, it just highlights kind of the technical ability that Harry Smith has. And, uh, and when he's confident and when he's on form, he, we, he's, he's shown this season he can be a top, top striker at this level that can score a number of goals and a number of different goals. So it's not just about him being like your typical six foot five big target man at this level. He can, he can do different things. He can, he can play a different way. And I think he can show that tonight and prove that he's going to have a future and he can pr continue to flourish on, under Richie Wellens. Do you expect then maybe, Jabbo, that we'll try and adapt to having... Smith leading the line, or Harry Smith leading the line, because you've got a struggling Oldham side and a, and a big striker who's scored as many goals as Harry has. Do you think mm. you almost try and let him cause as much mayhem as he can in that back line? Yeah, I, def I definitely think so. You know, he, he adds a different dimension to the team. 
um, his size, his presence, and you know, he'll draw players to him and create space for other people. But also, you know, sometimes it's about the players around when there's a big striker, because sometimes it's easy just to fire it forward. You know, and the way we're playing now, we are having an extra pass, and you know, we're not just like playing it long, got a big striker, let it go there. So hopefully they'll start finding his feet because he's a technical player, he can play. And sometimes a misconception with big guys, like, yeah, they want it around the body, they want it up their neck. We want it at the feet because we can also play also. I was a striker myself, but <laughs> I could play. But no, I'm saying, so um, it would be nice. I think it would help him if, if the team sort of find the extra pass and then find it into his feet because you can see from some of his goals, man, he, the guy can finish and a, and a good a, a good confidence. Harry Smith is a very dangerous striker and a good striker in this league. We all know that's the case. Um, he, he depends a lot on the service that he gets, though, mm. Brendan. You know, we've spoken about the strikers around him, but you've also got to build off of that midfield. It's a slightly different look tonight, or it's a different look to the last couple of games with Ethan Coleman and, and Hex Kipriani. But w w what do you expect from them, too? Yeah, another one who's got a big night is Ethan Coleman, because I think I still think he's a very good signing for us and one one for the future and one with a lot of potential but I think Hector Kipriani has now uh, gone through a little bit of dip in form and now come back stronger and, and has looked a better player under Richie Wellens and I think it's time that Ethan Coleman can show that he can do that as well today because I think long term those two are, are a very exciting partnership in the centre of midfield you've, you've got Darren Prattley who's come out today who, who's come into the team been very good but he's, a, he's, he's 36 so he's not going to be able to play Saturday, Tuesday Saturday, Tuesday going forward so it, it's about developing these two as a partnership and, and seeing how they can coexist together because I think Hector's been playing that slightly deeper role recently especially with Prattley in the side with with Prattley bombing on so I'll be interested to see whether they both sit today whether Hector is a bit more advanced or whether we get to see from Coleman in a more advanced position so I think it'll be interesting to see how Richie Wellens lines them up today. Th that'll obviously all depend on on how the Richie and, and the backroom staff approach the game and, and what mindset they attack it with and, and being that we do have more points on the board mm. and being that older Mark's struggling, what do you think the mindset will be? Is it is it is it less pressure or or, or is it wanna keep that unbeaten run going? No, no, I don't I don't think you as a manager you you put your, your foot down and you know if you've got if you, if the team's on it and you know they're flowing well then you want to continue that. You don't. You, you never say, "Oh, come on, we're doing well. I'll we'll change." The people that come in, they're going to come in with the instructions. Um, you know, we're here to win. You've seen what the other guys have done. You know, this is your chance. Go and show me why you should be playing. Why should you have this shirt? So um, they'll be on it. Um, they're going to want to continue the run. It's fantastic. And the ones that come in don't want to be the ones that have come in and lost the run as well. So they're going to have that in the back of their mind. So um, they're definitely going to have the impotence, the intensity. Um, and hopefully they'll they'll continue the run. Hopefully they will, indeed. Well, Wellens has certainly made an impact since joining, but he's of course been joined by a certain Paul Terry, and we caught up with him earlier this week to get his thoughts ahead of the game. Paul, obviously, firstly, welcome back to Letting Norwood. I know it's been a busy two and a half weeks, but firstly, what's your impressions on being back with the O's? No, it's been, it's been brilliant since we've come in. Uh, like I say, two and a half weeks ago, a lot of games. Not a lot of time on a training pitch, but we've tried to implement little things that we're looking for into the players. They've responded really well, um, took on board what we're asking of them and gone and delivered on, on a Saturday and a Tuesday so far. But early, early days yet, we're still getting little bits into them, but it's, it's been really positive so far. Mm. In terms of the results as well, they have been really positive and under such a quick period of time as well. Yeah, and listen, again, that's credit to the players. You know, They've, they've took information on, they want to learn, they want to get better. Um, we've just put little bits into them, um, asked questions of them to ask questions of the opposition, which they've done well. And listen, results speak for themselves and it also helps the settling in period. You know, we've, We've tried to lift them a little bit. Just get that belief back in them because they are a good group of players. They are a good team, um, and I think we're showing that at the minute. Firstly, Saturday, it was, you know, a couple of moments we had to ride out at times, but overall, quite a professional job. Yeah, very professional job. You know, like you say, there was a couple of moments where, you, you know, you, we could be better, but you know, and we are looking to improve. So we're nitpicking a little bit there, but we've got to do that to to keep improving and keep evolving. Mm. And then on to tomorrow night, be a trip to Oldham. We have, have struggled a bit recently. Obviously, you were a coach there with. Yeah. Um, Richie there yourself so it's a game we know is going to pose some um, different uh, questions for us yeah no definitely listen Oldham's a tough place to go on a Tuesday night you know um, John Sheridan's got in there with Tommy Wright again and, and got the place rocking a little bit more the fans are coming back in um, so it'll, it'll be a difficult tie they're fighting for their lives you know and we've just got to go there and nullify them 
impose our game on them and, and keep worrying about ourselves. really. You know, you can worry about other teams a lot, but the main thing is that we keep progressing as a team and keep doing the right things. And I think if we do that, we will cause not only them, but a lot of teams in this league a few problems. Mm, Gaffer mentioned on Saturday, maybe looking a bit leggy and probably not surprised with the fixture congestion we've yeah. had. So there's a bit of rotation maybe? Maybe a little, yeah, a bit of rotation, few in, few out. As you say, it's been a lot of games in a short space of time. We're asking players to do things that they haven't done for a long while. Um, so they come in and they've, and they've been doing it. But, you know, it's a chance now for us to look at a few others as well and give them a chance. And like we gave the ones when we first came in, it's now people now got to step up and they've got the shirt. Can they go and keep it? Now then, Oldham Athletic are the opposition for this evening's fixture. And the O's are, of course, looking to pick up maximum points, but might not be as easy as it looks on paper. But first, let's take a look at the starting lineup this evening for Oldham. In goal, number 23, Danny Rogers. Number two, Jordan Clark. Three, Sam Hart. Number six, and their captain this evening, Carl Piergiani. Number seven, Nicky Adams. Eight, Callum Whelan. Number nine, Hallam Hope. Ten, Davies Kayla Dunn. Number 17, Jack Stobbs. 28, Christopher Missalou. And number 32, Will Sutton. And on the subs bench for the Latics is Jason Lutweiler, Rafael Diara, Dylan Bahambula, Alex Hunt, Jamie Hopcutt, Benny Kuto, and Harry Vaughan. Um, so I, on paper, Brendan, they are the second worst team in the division. Um, they haven't had a fantastic season by any stretch of the imagination, but they've they've been okay in a few spells. So are, are you? Maybe unsure of what Oldham side will turn up this evening? Yeah, I think they're in a little bit of a better place than they were than the last time we played them uh, here at Brisbane Road and we won 5-0. I think John Sheridan came in and initially had a bit of an impact like he's done multiple times at Oldham. I think he, he, he saved them from worse positions than this before, so they were kind of hoping that he'd come in and have a, have a real impact. And he came in and initially... They had that new manager bounce, they won a few games, but it's all gone a bit sour again. And I think they're, without a win in eight, I think they've lost um, six on the trot and, and they look like they're really struggling now. And I think the, the relegation battle, which at a time included us, it looked a bit it looked a bit packed. It looked like there could be any number of teams, but at the minute I think it's between them and Stevenage and they'll be absolutely desperate today to, to pick up those three points. Mm. And there's a lot of off-field issues with your former club, Jabbo, and... Mm protests and, and what else. We won't go into too much detail, of course, but it's, it's not nice to see for any club. But with that and with the position they're in, they do feel like maybe a, a team that are prone to, to losing at the moment as well and, and maybe a bit of an easy hit for the O's. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help. Um, often when there's off-field off, off issues, then it affects on the field also. And it's probably playing um, a key role in what's happening there. But no game's easy. Um, you know, as, as long as or in, apply themselves right with the right attitude that they've had in previous games and going out to earn the right to play, then it, sh it, it should be it should be um, a, hopefully a comfortable victory. But you know, if you apply yourself, if you go there thinking, well, the bottom, this and that, and you take your foot off the gas and your eye off the prize, it, be, it could be difficult because remember they're fighting for their lives as well. Mm. I know for sure, and, and they are in a poor run of form, but. This is Leighton Orient, and um, we often don't do amazing against teams who are in bad runs of forms. We normally uh, like to help them out a little bit. Does that does that worry you at all, or do you think Oldham's form might speak for itself? I think it's uh, maybe a little bit of different Leighton Orient under Richie Wellens. I think he's spoken about how he wants to change the mentality, how he wants to make this a, a special place to come to, and about he's already kind of called out the fans a little bit even last week for some of their chanting so I think Richie Wellens is trying to change that mentality where we say oh a typical Leighton Orient they're going to lose to a, to a relegation threatened side after they've done so well so I think Richie Wellens there'll be no room for complacency with him I think given it's his former club and given he knows Tommy Wright and John Sheridan quite well the two managers or an assistant at Oldham I think he's going to be extra fired up for this one and, and, and we'll be doing everything we can to make it four wins in a row and we'll obviously need to be fired up for it and looking from Oldham's point of view, they'll also be, as you said, they'll be fighting for it. Mm. Um, that is a dangerous game to play at, at, mm. at this point in the season, especially they will probably look in terms of places where not a million miles away. Mm. Do you think that will give them that extra maybe bit of de determination this evening? I think it will give them some sort of belief and hope for sure. I think they'll think, well, Orient on a good run, but they were, they were where we were recently. So if they can do it, we can do it sort of thing. But, um, you know, at the same time, Orient are on a great run and it's going to be in the back of their mind, but they're going to hope that Orient will take their foot off the gas. And if they do, then we're playing to their hands. But I think Orient will have enough today, I'm mm. pretty sure. 
And, and what do you expect then from Oldham, considering their form and, and their recent results? What, what do you think they'll have in store for us? Yeah, I think they'll probably be pretty direct. I think you, you look at some of their threats. I think you, you talk about people like Cole Piergiani. We, we've seen him play multiple times. He's going to be a big threat from set pieces. going to make sure you mark him. And, and also a player on it fans will know well is Nicky Adams, who, who's done a job at mm. League Two level seemingly for quite some time now. He's a really good kind of winger, wing back at this level. Really good delivery. Really good from set pieces onto Piergiani's head. So I think that's going to be their biggest threat today. I think they're going to be direct, probably trying to be difficult to beat. Well, probably they've got Stevenage on Saturday and what's going to be a massive game. So I think if you offer them a point, I think they'd probably take it just to stop the rot ahead of Saturday's game. So it's going to be a tough test. It certainly is. And, and looking at their attacking options as well, um, they, they, they do have some decent players that maybe haven't been firing as of late, but who who is in, in amongst their arsenal? Yeah, I've picked out um, Davis Keeler Dunn as, as, as a player to watch today. You'll see from the, the clips on screen, he's a good finisher. He's a good striker for this level. I think he's only 22, 23, gets a lot of poacher-type goals. He, he, he's got 12 League Two goals this season, which, for context, is the same as Aaron Drynan. So to do that for a, a struggling side as Oldham are, it's pretty impressive. He got 10 goals last season as well. So to hit double figures again for, for a team that is struggling it, it is quite impressive. And He's a player who I think no matter what division Oldham are going to be in next season, I think they might struggle to keep a hold of because you see him from the finishes here, um, from the from the clips here. He's just a really good finisher for the level, and I think if he gets a chance tonight, I expect him to take it. I think he scored on on, on Saturday, and, uh, and he is just a, probably their best player. I think that, that goal <laughs> is a little bit out of the ordinary compared to the other finishes, but shows all the different things that he's capable of. And then that highlights, Jabba, what we're seeing now. It, it highlights everything we're saying about the O's mm. not taking their foot off the yeah. gas and, and not taking things for granted because mm. with, with with a player like that, yeah, you, you just you just you got to make sure you're you're on you're on the game, we're on the ball. Um, you know, we've seen they have got a threat and a genuine threat there. So, um, but I think Rich Williams will have them fired up. You know, there's no room for complacency. Um, you know, we're on such a good ride now. Let's just keep it going. Hopefully you're right on that one, Jabbo. Uh, now, kickoff is just around five minutes away, and we're going to be heading up to join the match commentary team very shortly. But of course, if you're watching along live on our YouTube stream this evening, don't forget it's available for all fans worldwide, UK and international to watch. So you can head over to the to the website that is on screen now to pick up your match pass to join along with our, our special special guest commentator, Matt Porter who's covering Dave Victor this evening. Uh, but before we do head up there, let's remind ourselves of the Orient side facing Oldham Athletic this evening. In goal for the O's, number 22, Lawrence Vigru. Number three, Connor Wood. Seven, Paul Smith. Nine, Harry Smith. Number 10, Frank Nublay. Number 14, Otis Khan. 19, and skipper is Omar Beckles. Number 20, Royal Sotiriu. 26, Hector Kiprianu. 34, Ethan Coleman. And 35, George Ray. And on the bench for the O's, Sam Sargent, Aaron Dryan and Darren Prattley, Matt Young, Shadoji, Dan and Krumer, and Jordan Brown. Um, now, we probably haven't spoken too much about the defence, and, and looking at there, there is the one change of Otis Khan uh, coming into that right-back position, which he's done already this season. Mm. But do you think a big thing for Richard will be building on the clean sheets that we've, we've been keeping recently? Because... They've been a very welcome addition. Yeah, absolutely. I think you've got, you've got George Ray coming in as well today, and, and I think he brings a bit more experience. I think Richie Wans has been keen to emphasise the fact that he wants, a, wants an experienced defence. And, and, and Otis Khan uh, gives us another dimension, I think, playing from, from right back where we expect him to play because Adam Thompson is, 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 has been excellent, but he is very much a, a defence first right back. He's, he's very conservative, whereas um, Otis Khan will look to bomb forward at every opportunity and, and try and use his uh, attacking ability, which could work well because you've got, like I was speaking earlier about Hector Kipriano and Ethan Coleman, if those two kind of sit as a two rather than one bombing on, then Otis Khan can perhaps be the one bombing on but from right back, mm. and uh, he gives you an extra option there, especially when you've got someone like Harry Smith up front. We spoke about the, the service that he needs, and I think you'll be looking at Otis Khan as, as probably the best deliverer of a ball in that team to, 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 to provide him with that service. And, and, and the opposite fullback as well, of course, Connor Wood. He's one that I think probably has gone a bit under the radar and deserves a bit more praise for his his, his revitalisation under Richie Wellens. He's been fantastic for the past few games, and 
he's even been getting forward, been defending as well. He's just he's been proving his worth. Yeah, I think we when we signed him, we saw him as a consistent League Two fullback. He'd played for a number of seasons for Bradford, played almost every game, and, and, and their fans said he was just a very good fullback for the level. And we didn't quite see that at, at times earlier in the season. He was in and out of the side, but he's proven under Richie Wellens that he can be just that, like you say, just a solid. Seven out of ten every week, fullback that can do his job defensively, get forward at times, and um, provide that consistency, which is so important. Mm, and and I know we've spoken about it already this evening, Jabbo, but looking at those clean sheets and looking at the defence as we look to build mm. for the rest of the season into the next one, mm. how massively important is it to keep those clean sheets and, and build that foundation to to build the rest of the team on? Yeah, hundred percent. It's so important, especially for a defensive unit. You you want your defence to sort of be tight, um, consistent. And keeping clean sheet breeds that. So um, it'd, be, it'd be very important. It'd be Rich Williams be honing in on that, looking into that very well because you build from the defence, you build your team, and you know, and, it's, and, it's, and it will help them in going forward. And it's a hard one to call, Brendan. But looking at the turf out there, looking at, at the opposition that we do have tonight, what are you expecting? I think the the lads that have come in, the, the five changes will be hungry to make their mark, and I'm confident that we can make it four in a row. Hopefully your confidence <laughs> proves right there, Brendan. Well, here we go. It's time to pass over to our special guest commentator, Matt Porter, who's joined by Matt Hiscock. Up the O's. <laughs> A very good evening and welcome to Boundary Park as Richie Wellens returns to the club he managed between September 2017 and June 2018, looking to get four wins in a row for the first time in late Orient season. It's been hotshot Rule Soteria with six in seven who's masterminded the O's return to form and fired them towards the comfort of mid-table as they look to take on an Oldham Athletic side tonight currently occupying the dreaded drop zone. It's a cold and damp evening in Boundary Park with Oldham trying to preserve a 115 years of Football League history, but time is running out for John Sheridan's men who've lost their last six matches. Alongside me tonight, Matt Hiscock. Matt, let's run through the two sides. Yeah, well, five changes for the O's tonight, Matt, and it's Harry Smith, Frank Nuble, Otis Khan, Ethan Coleman, George Ray all coming to the side. Adam Thompson, Shadogi, Darren Prattley, Theo Archibald, it's a 